Hey, what's up, guys? Today we're back with a network tweaking guide. I just wanted to say I appreciate all of you for the support you've been giving me. I want to try and push out more content with PC tuning guides to give you the best information I can. Let's get straight into the video of network latency. In this video, I would try my best to explain what each setting does and how it affects your network in general. Here is the terms that you need to know from now on. Latency, the delay in data transmission, buffer bloat, excessive buffering causing latency, and QoS is prioritizing important data over less critical data. Number one is the introduction to network latency and importance in gaming. Network latency, often referred to as ping, is the time it takes for a data packet to travel from the source to the destination and back. In online gaming, low latency is crucial because it ensures that your actions in the game are registered quickly and accurately. High latency can lead to delays, making the gaming experience frustrating and less enjoyable. This lag can be the difference between winning and losing, especially in fast-paced games where split-second decisions are critical. Number two is understanding what buffer bloat is. Buffer bloat means that there is excessive buffering of data packets that occurs in a network, leading to high latency and jitter. It typically happens when network devices like routers and modems have large buffers that fill during periods of congestion. While buffering is generally beneficial for smooth data flow, excessive buffering could delay packet transmission, causing significant lag in real-time games. Buffer bloat is particularly problematic because it can occur on even high-speed internet connections, where the problem is not the lack of bandwidth, but rather how data packets are being managed. Number three is the impact of buffer bloat on gaming. When a game sends data packets to the server and receives responses, any delay caused by buffering can lead to noticeable lag. This can manifest as delayed responses to player inputs such as shooting, moving, or other in-game actions. The result is a less responsive gaming experience. Additionally, buffer bloat can cause jitter, leading to unpredictable gameplay and making it difficult to react consistently. I've made a video on this before on why latency is bad, and I'll go ahead and go over it again. High latency will significantly degrade the quality of your game. It creates a time lag between a player's action of the game's response, disrupting the gameplay. In online games like Fortnite or Call of Duty, high latency can give players with lower latency an advantage, as their actions are processed more quickly by the game servers. This can lead to unfair situations where gamers with high latency feel like they're constantly a step behind, while the players with low latency will always have the first shot. High latency can cause issues such as rubber banding, where a player's character suddenly moves back to a previous position, making it difficult to enjoy the game. To tweak and lower your latency and buffer bloat, we can tweak our network settings. One common approach is to enable quality of service, which is the QoS. QoS prioritizes gaming traffic over other types of data, such as streaming and downloading games. Another method is to adjust the maximum transmission unit, which can optimize the size of data packets sent over the network reducing fragmentation and improving latency. While also using wired connections instead of Wi-Fi can reduce latency as wired connections are generally more stable and have lower ping times. Now the benefits of optimizing your network settings can lead to several benefits beyond just lower latency. A more stable connection can reduce packet loss which occurs when data packets are dropped before reaching the servers leading to a smoother gameplay. Reducing jitter can also result in a more consistent performance allowing for more predictable and responsive gaming. Additionally optimizing Optimizing your network settings can improve the overall quality of real-time applications, making them more reliable. In summary, by addressing issues like buffer bloat and tweaking network settings, gamers can significantly enhance their online gaming experience, making it more enjoyable and competitive. Now to actually start to get into the network tweaking guide video, I'm going to leave this file within the link in the description. You can go ahead and download it. Right click it, run with PowerShell. Once you get to this window, you can select your adapter in the top left. It's going to show up all these crazy settings, but don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly how to utilize them for the best performance. So starting in the top left, you're just going to follow me here. You want to enable your receive size scaling. If you do have your number of receive queues here, I'd go ahead and select four. I'd keep your profile on NUMA static, or I would switch it if it's not on it already. And how to calculate these, you can go ahead and open up your task manager, go to your performance, and then click on your CPU. We're going to be using our cores right here, and we're going to go two less than what you have on your cores. So if you have 10, go 8. If you have 12, go 10, and so on. So since I have eight, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this on six. And then I would put your max processors two below your max processor. We're not gonna worry about much of these. You can go ahead and copy my settings right here. And then for your RSS global, your receive size scaling global, I would put this on zero and then one. Your interrupt settings, I like to enable this. Your interrupt priority, I would 
keep this on either undefined or normal. You don't have to worry about these CPU checks down here. And then for your advanced adapter options, you can go ahead and follow me here. Flow control disabled, checksum offload disabled for IPv4 and IPv6. Your LSO v1 disabled, but your LSO v2, I would enable this. I'd keep these three down here, your IPv6, PMARP offload, and PMNS offload all disabled. Keep your priority VLAN tag on three, your packet priority and VLAN enabled. For your receive buffers and transmit buffers, it really depends on what network card you have. 2048 works the best for me. For you, it might be 1024, 512, 256 on each. You always have to test around and find out which one works best for you. For your interrupt moderation, I would put this on disabled. TX int delay, you put this on whatever it's already on. Don't change this whatsoever. Your packet direct undefined, cola scaling undefined, UDP TX scaling is on undefined as well. And for your power saving settings, you can go ahead and copy whatever I have here. You can go ahead and click apply all in the top. You can see in the background, it's applying it all to your registry. And now you can close out of this and now you have tweaked your network adapter for lower latency and transmit buffers i hope you guys have enjoyed the video and i hope i was able to help out anyone out there looking for a guide like this it would mean a lot if you guys could drop a like and subscribe and comment how this guide has helped you i will try and put out more guides within the future and i'll try and be more consistent with uploads make sure to check out the discord link in the description where we offer our paid prices within the exodus server we have a windows tweak bios tweak and a custom os i hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you in the next video.